Cheers. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas. Next week. <laughs> Welcome to the Wednesday News Show. I'm back from holiday. I'm here. You did a very good job by yourself. I thought you were excellent. How was Thailand? Thailand was good. Thailand was hot. The climbing was amazing. It watched my vlog. I had a vlog. Then have you vlog. released a video already? No, but it's almost, almost. Cool. Looking mm. forward to that. Yeah. But anyway, back to normality now, uh, and it's a new show, and a special kind of new show, because we are doing a, a Q, new new show. A new new show. Right, okay. For just this week. Okay. Because we're doing a Q&A session. So yesterday we asked you to comment on YouTube and Instagram and stuff about questions that you have about the show, about upcoming, pl up -pumbling? upcoming plans. You guys responded, and we are going to answer your questions. Yeah, but first, we've got some news. And first up, we've got some ascents in Italy, first ascents in Italy and in Spain by Anak Verhoeven and Laura Rigora. Laura Rigora has made the first ascent of a proposed 8C plus route in the Spalonga Cave in South Lazio, Italy. The new route connects Invidia and Grandi Gesti before finishing up with Viaggio Infinito. The new route has been called Itzigit Narg and the grade of 8C plus is a tentative one. Meanwhile, Anak Verhoeven has kept up her rich vein of form with an ascent which is a connection of Ciudad de Dios and La Novena Enmienda and is called, logically, Ciudad de Dios pa la Enmienda and it's graded at 9A forward slash plus. Very nice pronunciation there. Thanks very much. Uh, it's pretty cool because you don't really see so many female first ascents at the moment. Uh, Anak Verhoeven is crushing it and Laura Gora is only 16. So yeah, she's always crushing it. Moving on to some Scottish winter climbing news, which is my most terrifying form of climbing I've ever done. But that's <laughs> true. But Greg Boswell and Guy Robertson have put up a new route just near Glencoe at a crag called. Go on, do it, do it, do it. Our camera lady and editor Laura had to write this down for me. Beachen Nambia. Very good. No, she's shaking her head. They've called the route Lost Arrow Winter Variation and reckon it's one of the most sustained routes in the country. And having seen the steepness of the route in pictures, I can understand why. It's five pitches with a stiff winter grade of X10. I've been told that the conditions in Scotland are brilliant at the moment, so fingers crossed they continue for the rest of the season. Okay, so Kaito Kurakami has climbed a monster high ball in Japan. It, this thing is huge and he opted not to um, top rope it and solve the problems out that way. He crown, crown rooted it up. This is the boulder. <laughs> right. um, which meant that he took some falls uh, and they're wince inducing. So, yeah, check these out. My question is why was he doing this on a ground up on a boulder? That is brave. I mean, it's, it's, it's boulder ethics. Oh. I can't say anything more than that. I don't know anything about boulder ethics. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so more news Sang Sun Son has repeated a 9A plus in Magaluf called Demencia Sanili. I didn't pronounce that right, but you know. The route was opened by Chris Sharma and has been repeated by Ikea Pu and Stefano Gosolfi. There's a video in the copy below, so make sure you check it out. So it's time for our Q&A session, and we're gonna try something a little bit different by going live on Instagram so you can ask us some questions. It won't be live for you, but it'll be live for them. So while we set that up, here's a bit of a teaser. Yeah, dropping today on Epic, at Epic TV is a film by Mikael Lima. He's a Danish filmmaker and the film he's releasing is about the road to recovery of a climber called Thomas Blaberg. Uh, it's an epic kind of 15 minute film. Really, really good, really well told. Beautiful cinematography. Here's the teaser. Man can never see it any longer. But I'm going to be in today. På de dårlige dage, der kan jeg ikke rigtig gå på foden. På de gode dage, der tænker jeg ikke så meget over det. Det var igennem katringen, at jeg kom til skade. Det var også katringen, der gav mig motivation til genoptræning igen. Da jeg fandt ud af, at jeg stadigvæk kunne skubbe nogle af mine grænser og fortsat blive endnu dygtigere til at klatre, der gav det mig ekstra motivation til at blive ved.
Hello guys, welcome back. So, uh, this part of the show, we are live right now on Instagram on Tuesday, but this show is coming out on Wednesday. So we've been asking our live Instagram audience to send us some questions, and they have been, so I'm gonna scroll through and find some for us now. Uh, Mr. Flat School says, what do you think about Relay Vertical? That's your baby, well, your, your idea originally, wasn't it? S'il te plaît, non. C'est pas fait pour ça. Non, non, c'est pas une prise, Alex. Non, Alex, non, c'est pas une prise. Aujourd'hui, les grimpeurs ouvrent leur propre blog pour un contest bien sympa en Italie. I love Relo Vertical, I think it's brilliant. I think it's one of the best French Thomas. climbing films, French climbing programs on the internet. Uh, the guy who makes it is a bit of a genius when it comes to video making and cinematography and editing. He has his own style and the content that he creates is really interesting and it's totally different from mm. any other climbing content I've seen, so I love it. Even if you don't speak French, it's worth checking out, isn't it? Yeah, because there's a lot of subtitle stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely worth checking out. Thanks for uh, asking that. Mr. Joshua.Hannon says, uh, would you say you have a commentating voice or are you always just this excited? Who's he talking to? <laughs> I think we both, <laughs> I, know, I mean, like you. Uh, generally I'm quite an excited person. So that was Instagram. Thank you very much, Instagram guys. Uh, so let's move on to the questions that people posted on YouTube and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so a question I was asked recently in Thailand uh, by someone who I cannot remember your name. I'm really sorry, mate. But he was asking whether the gear we use in the gear show is uh, sponsored. So do people pay us to talk about equipment? No, is the basic answer. Mm -hmm. Occasionally brands will pay us to make videos and we'll sometimes use some of their equipment in shows. But very, very important definition is we will never, ever, ever talk about equipment that we don't like. Yeah. We've always used it. We like it. We think it's fantastic gear uh, and we buy it ourselves. Yeah. And nine times out of 10, we pick this stuff in the Epic TV shop that fits the show. So if I'm doing a font show, I'll pick equipment that I've used that I think is great. We need you guys to trust us because we're climbers and we use this stuff. So that stuff in the gear show is our opinion and our opinion only. Absolutely, yeah. So, can I ask you a question? Of course, uh, you can. Anthony Bykov is yeah. trying to find out what our favourite moment of the year was. Favourite moment of the year? Okay, my favourite moment of the year. Favourite moment of the year was filming Adam Andra on site and eight C plus in the Frankenjura. That was pretty special. That was amazing. Yeah. Uh, my favourite, which was also one of my worst moments, was when Anthony Goldstein landed on me from about four metres up on a boulder problem. Okay, sorry. Oh, Matt, you're so lucky. Anthony Goldstein landed on me. So now I'm in an ambulance. Very funny in retrospect. And what happened to you? I ruined my wrist and a doctor shoved it back into place <laughs> in an ambulance. <laughs> Uh, okay, I've got a question from Toby who says, 10A, will it happen in 2018? No. Yes. Possibly. Okay, next question. Slabidask asked, what happened to the Revo? Good name. Uh, good question as well. So I'm actually getting a call from Wild Country in January to talk about the Revo. Uh, we saw the Revo in its early form. We filmed the Revo and then uh, Wild Country made some modifications and some changes to it, which was why it was delayed. I'm really hoping it's gonna be coming out after Christmas, basically. That's yeah. the latest news I've heard. The changes that have been made on it, we will wait and see. Watch this space. Hopefully we'll find out in January. Mm. Uh, another question for you, uh, Chank Ludo One, high ball bouldering pads. Are we going to see air pads coming in the next couple of years? I mean, yeah, it probably would have helped out Kaita, wouldn't it, on his big high That's ball true. in yeah, Japan. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think it's quite an ethical question, as well as being, um, it's obviously very practical. Uh, you can imagine they'd be able to like have these things and shrink them, and they just go out of bold out of block. Yeah. 
but then it kind of I guess it brings in questions of ethics and when is a solo not a solo yeah when you've got a massive air, air balloon it's true at the bottom of the route um I, it's a question that i think i think is a really fascinating one but we're not going to cover it in a huge amount of detail today because it is a whole show unto itself i think ethics in fact i think i did a gear show similar to this on ethics yeah but uh yeah we will talk about the ethics of it later but yeah air pads maybe soon all right cool um <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, a good one from Owen uh, Free Talk says, how do you get sponsored by a climbing company? Because there's kind of two ways for this, aren't there? Yeah, from my standpoint, uh, obviously there's like the whole kind of creating content and kind of like, and numbers. Climbing companies care about numbers. So uh, I think I've like met a couple of people in the past who maybe aren't the strongest climbers, but have somehow accrued uh, a very impressive following on Instagram, for example, and climbing companies are like, yeah, we'll sponsor you mm. kind of thing. They're an influencer, aren't they? Yeah, and so that is definitely one way of getting sponsored. The other way of getting sponsored is... Just be really good. Just be really, really good. Like, better than everyone else good. Yeah. Or, I mean, you could, like, be in the top, like, 5-10% and, and have a chance as well. Nah, yeah. Uh, Cody Marcus asks, what's your favourite colour? Orange. Rubbish. Blue. Uh... <laughs> All right, Future of, Future of Climbing Daily by Michael Blackley. I think that, I mean, personally, I'd like to go down the route of more going to crags, filming with climbers, and getting this sort of behind the scenes as it's happening stuff, like really getting involved uh, in the climbing world as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that sounds really good. I mm -hmm. think in terms of like what we're doing, in terms of what who we're collaborating with, I think we'll continue to try and kind of work with athletes as well as companies. Um, it kind of runs parallel mm. uh, and quite often working with certain companies is actually just as exciting as working with certain athletes, I find. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm a real stickler for like, A, getting behind the scenes of the athletes, but also getting behind the, behind the scenes of the, the, the companies and really finding out like the story behind them. I think there's such amazing stories behind some of these companies yeah. um, because climbing has such a rich history to it and that is reflected in the, the histories of, of some of these companies. So yeah, that, that's that's what I quite like. I'd like to get into the Scarpa factory. <laughs> yes, definitely. Well, so you've already far, been to La Sportiva. I've been to La Sportiva. Uh, yeah, the Scarpa would be, I'd like to see inside a Scarpa. So maybe that'll be an episode. Definitely. Uh, moving on to Instagram. Um, the official Psychzk is asking about bright clothes. Why do you wear bright clothes when multi-pitch or ice climbing? Why do you wear bright clothes? Uh, I wear bright clothes when I want to be seen. Yep, that's basically it. So you can By be other seen. people, yeah. Other yeah. people, rescuers, it just makes sense. Like yeah. if you're up an ice climb and you hurt yourself, you don't want to be wearing white. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's what the army wears. Yeah. Um, uh, does Epic TV have any pro invitational competitions from Hiromosaurus? No. no. We'd like to. That'd be great. But not right now. No, uh, no immediate plans to have them. But further down the line, who knows? Uh, internships comes up a lot, actually. We get it a lot. And this particular question was from Gabrielle Butto, who's asking how they can get an internship at Epic TV. I, I mean, basically, just sort of send us an email. We've got the email we use for most things, climb at epictv.com. If you've got something about you that's special, uh, you write an incredible covering letter, or you nag us enough, then you never know what might happen. We're not Multi Multilingual? Oh, multi, yeah. For you, come French, more French people to work here. So, uh, yeah. If you have something you think is special, send us an email, because you never but know. But you can be from anywhere. I'd like not, yeah, not, not specifically. No, French. you can be like whatever nationality, doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Uh, have you got any for USA trips coming up? Who's that from? Uh, that is from <laughs> Josh. What to Timothy Baker? So you laughed at my Joshua Timothy Baker. Joshua not, Timothy Baker. Yeah, him. Uh, we, again, we get this a lot. People saying, "Come to the America. Come to the come to America. Come to the Americas. Come to, the Americas. Come to Singapore. Come come Australia. We would love to come to all those places, but they're really expensive to go to, and we have budgets. Yeah. And so when we do go to these on these trips, we kind of organise it with brands and with athletes and with climbing gyms and stuff, and they like want us to come, and they like come. We'll cover your costs make some content for us, promote our thing. That's kind of what we were talking about before with like the collaborations and stuff like that. We do collaborations all over the place. So if you know of five or six American gyms, companies who want us to come and create content, mm. we'll come on a tour, no problem. Mm. And maybe chuck in some live dates, 
Matt and Hugo host. <laughs> That'd be great, like comedian um, show. Like fill out the, yeah. the New York Palladium yeah. if that even the exists. The Caribbean, we'd love to go there and climb on a beach somewhere. So, absolutely. Make climb it happen, on a beach. People. You just have been doing that, haven't you? I have been doing that for two weeks, it's great. Yeah. So that's the end of the question and answer section of the show. Let's talk about videos. Uh, Magnus Mitbo and Eric Carlson have combined in a vlog takeover with each other's vlogs. And we've put one up on the channel uh, called Challenge Thor. It's a finger strength. Thor. What did I say? Thor. It's Thor, isn't it? T-H-O-R. That's where you're from. Watch it, it's brilliant. <laughs> Uh, and then Dai Koyamada is climbing the Frankenjura. If you don't know who Dai Koyamada is, he is a very, very, very strong Japanese climber and he's well worth checking out. He's climbing the Frankenjura. More probably known for his bouldering uh, ascents, uh, but yeah, he's climbing some sport climbing in Frankenjura. Awesome. Impressive. So that's it for the pre-Christmas Wednesday news show. Next week, we'll bring you the best ofs, where we find the best bouldering. Uh, Sport climbing. Yep, training videos. Training videos. Uh, loads of stuff. Matt's picks. My pick, my favorite shows. So that's coming at you next week. But uh, in the meantime, have an amazing Christmas. Have a great Christmas. Yeah, we're gonna have a couple of days off. We're gonna have Christmas day off, and we're gonna have Boxing Day off. Me and then too. we'll be back on the Wednesday. So today's Wednesday. We'll be here tomorrow the next day, and then back on the next Wednesday. Yeah. That makes sense. We're missing Monday, Tuesday. I could have said that quickly, couldn't I? See you soon. Bye.